Hello everyone, I am Bianca and today we have some fun with history. So recently a very good friend of mine came enthusiastically at me and said that she has a book that I will find very interesting. And the whole premise of the book is Vlad the Impaler, but female. Who dares to do such a thing? The disgrace, scandalous dishonor, who dares? Now, if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> I am Romanian, and one that knows history quite well. So I had to read it. I had to read this book. I had to know. I was ready to hate this book, to not like it, for this book to be ridiculous, and obviously not historically accurate. Now, don't get me wrong, it's historical fiction, it doesn't have to be historically accurate. If I want that, I can just watch a documentary or read biographies. <laughs> but the idea was so bold and Romania is so rarely used as an inspiration that this book triggered something in me. So, is this book historically accurate? Well, <laughs> as much as a book about a female Vlad the Impaler can actually be. And apparently, very much so. You can see how much research the author actually did and the author's note is so beautiful <laughs> especially because it gives you some uh, references and some books you can read to understand better the characters and the historical figures <sighs> Now let's clearly see what this book got right Character names like Bogdan, Radu, Nicolae, Mircea, all real Romanian names. Geographical places like Sigishwara or Trgoviste, beautiful real places that you can go visit. You did not pronounce all of these names correctly until now, did you? What was beautiful for me to see was the correct depiction of Valachia, Moldavia and Transylvania, the three main regions that now form Romania. And yes, Transylvania is a real place and beautiful to visit. Prince Charles comes quite often here, okay? The word boyar or boyer in Romanian is real. That's how we used to describe the novels from medieval times or from that period of time. The word Voivod is correct, but there is a distinction between Voivod and Prince or Ruler. Voivod basically means you have full authority over military stuff. Army, battles, wars, but that's it. A ruler or a prince <laughs> Well, it has authority over everything. <laughs> so that's why a ruler can be a voivod, and in a way it is, but a voivod can't be a ruler. Moldavia and Valachia had princes, rulers, but Transylvania had only voivods. Historical reasons Yes, but I don't think it is necessary for me to get into this sort of details. 
There was good description of the Ottoman Empire, its rankings, divisions, the harem, the Janissaries. I have nothing to say about those. Okay, but these are general things. Let's see what was accurate from the life of Vlad the Impaler. Or Lada. <laughs> yes, Vlad the Impaler is thought to be born in Sigishwara, Transylvania, and historians came to accept the year 1431. That means Lada is at least four years younger. However, the mother of Vlad is actually a mystery. I mean, not mystery, but there are a few historical figures that are speculated to be his mother, so the whole thing with Dracul or Draculesht, Draculia or the dragon were because Vlad's father was part of the Order of the Dragon, a military society whose main purpose was to defend Europe and Christianism from the Ottoman Empire. And, you know, a lot of crusades happened because of that. Vlad had an older brother named Mircea, who was as cruel as he is in the books. He had a younger brother named Rado the Handsome, who's just slightly mentioned in history. And he also had another brother called Dan was killed. I mean, all of them were killed, so <laughs> is this detail really important? So Vlad II, or Vlad the Impaler's father, they were not very original in naming their children. So Vlad II <laughs> refused to support the Ottoman Empire in a battle against Transylvania. And that meant treason. So he was called in a diplomatic meeting with the Sultan Murad II. Again, they were not very original in naming their children either. On this diplomatic trip, he took Vlad and Radu with him. Upon arrival, they were all imprisoned. So, you know, he was actually tricked into a trap he didn't willingly give his children to the Sultan. Yet, Vlad II was let free, but the children remained in the Empire to assure his loyalty. But they did actually receive very good education and the Empire wanted to make them very good warriors you know, to serve them. Well, that backfired. <laughs> In the years that they were there, Vlad indeed felt like he was captured. He came to hate more and more the Empire, while Radu was having the time of his life and came to love more and more the customs and traditions from there. How much Vlad the Impaler and Mehmed actually interacted in that period of time? I can't really comment on that. As you can see in the book, Vlad II did indeed betray the Empire again <laughs> and claimed that the death of his children was a necessary sacrifice. Now, Vlad and Radu were not actually killed, obviously, again, because they wanted to make them soldiers of the Empire. So, you know, <laughs> these betrayals won't happen again. Vlad II and Mircea were indeed killed by John Hunyadi. And one year after that, Vlad indeed came back to Wallachia to rule it. But only for two months. 
Radu at that time was indeed a very good friend with Mehmed and decided to not leave the empire. There is a scene in the book in which Radu and Lada witness a thief being impaled as punishment for his crimes. This scene or scenario is actually in a way true or at least there is a legend that Vlad witnessed in one of his days in captivity <laughs> how a thief was punished by being impaled and that served as inspiration in his future punishment for the Ottoman soldiers. So there are some hints of some military strategies that were used by Vlad the Impaler when fighting against the Ottoman Empire. And actually not only by him, Stefan the Great from Moldavia used the same strategy. Um, actually, a, a lot of people, if not everyone, that fought against the Empire at some point used this strategy, but anyway... <laughs> which means burning the crops and poisoning the water. Look, the Ottoman Empire was huge. That meant its army was huge. That meant they could not bring enough food or so much food to actually be possible for them to use in all the journey, all the battles. It was not physically possible. So, you know, the rulers of those regions wanting to stop the army or like make a lot of casualties before the actual <laughs> before the army actually arrived to the destination use this pretty often. Another strategy that's been hinted at is using the land in your advantage. Again, the Ottoman Empire, pretty huge. The army, pretty huge. Valachian and Moldavian's armies, not so much. <laughs> but we still won a lot of battles because we knew how to use our land. Fighting in swamps or canyons were easy for us, a small army that knew the land. But for the Ottoman army, huge, unaware of its surroundings, not that much. So final thoughts? This book was surprisingly pretty historically accurate. Should you use it as a history lesson? No. <laughs> but the main points were depicted correctly and the changes that were made were, you know, to serve the plot. And transforming Vlad into Lada was a choice that by the end of the book I came to accept. Also, this book was hilarious, <laughs> at least for me, because the whole time I had like a constant buzzing in my head that said, this is Vlad. Vlad the Impaler is kissing Mehmed, just saying. <laughs> I know that the first and the second book are actually quite historically accurate and the third one is just doesn't care anymore, but that means the second book should be very interesting because I know history, and that's why this whole book, this first book, felt more like a prologue for me than an actual book. Because if the second book follows history, as it did until now, a lot of things are going to happen. <laughs> Remember when I said that the Empire educated Vlad so he will be loyal to the Empire? Because of the geographical position of Wallachia, Moldavia and Transylvania, right in between 
the Christian Europe and you know the Ottoman Empire <laughs> a lot of wars and battles and wars and battles <laughs> and more battles <laughs> were fought between Wallachians or Romanians and the Ottomans and when I say a lot I actually mean a lot <laughs> There is Constantinople and the moment when Vlad III became Vlad the Impaler. You know, the 20,000 bodies, the forest. <laughs> you know, a legendary moment that I'm curious if it actually appears in one of the books. Or in the second book, which I order and can't wait to read. That is a conversation for another time. If you want to hear about that, leave a like, subscribe, check out my other videos and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think? Did this book feel like a prologue because you also know history? Did I miss something? Is the second book going to be as epic as history is? We shall see. And that's it for today. See you next time and remember Transylvania is a real place.